Standing in the ring now are two undefeated boxers. Firstly, out of the blue corner is our challenger. His official weight for the contest, 11 stone, five pounds, six ounces. Five fights, five victories, one finishing inside the scheduled distance. Wearing white shorts this evening and boxing out of Derby. Introducing the challenger, the undefeated George and across the ring stands the proud champion boxing out of the red corner. Officially on the scales at 11 stone, 5 pounds, 4 ounces. His record perfect. 8 fights, 8 victories, 4 going inside the scheduled distance. He's wearing the black shorts with silver. Tonight, he makes the first defence of his title and he makes it right here in his home city of Coventry introducing the undefeated River Wilson Bend! <laughs> Referee Sean Messer will now issue his final instructions. So the local fighter who is being cheered to the rafters here in Coventry, River Wilson Bent, the taller man in those black and silver trunks, defends his Midlands area middleweight title against George Farrell who gets a big chance here. Both fighters undefeated, Farrell really a natural super middleweight, brings that strength and physical size but Wilson Bent, we know Richie is dangerous. He is dangerous, he's rangy, he's a little bit taller than Farrell. So he'll, he'll look to establish his jab and maybe box at distance, especially early on in the contest, just to take a look at Farrell. But I do like Farrell, I think he's skillful. He's got a bit of power as well. He's got to close that gap down to land the bigger shot on, on Wilson Bent. But yeah, I'm looking forward to this one because this is two undefeated boxers, Dave. So something's got to go here. So I'm looking forward to it. River Wilson Ben won the title against Troy Coleman. And uh, our last show, brilliant right hand over the top. Thrilling shot that was. Got in all of the lists in terms of domestic knockouts of the year. Chopping right hand and for a fan of Tommy Hearns who River Wilson Ben idolizes. He said it was a Tommy Hearns knockout, the, the chopping right over the top. There it is. Catches Farrell nice and clean early on. He's made a slight mistake there, Wilson Bender. Just dipping down, he almost got caught. I think he got clipped with that left up from Farrell. But Wilson Bent on that front foot, that's okay from him. But if you're watching the way he's using his jab, he's just boxing with caution at the moment, Wilson Bent. Just taking a look at Farrell. Boxing at distance, look there behind that jab and just stepping away from Farrell. And Farrell will look to slip to the left and whip that right hand over the top. He almost did it there. So yeah, it, it's interesting this opening round to see how the tactics are, are, are going to pan out here. But straight away, Wilson Bent, he's keeping it long. Both try to land at the same time there. And Farrell forced Wilson Bent to take a step back. He's being roared on here, River Wilson Bent. He's hugely popular locally. Good response though there from Farrell. This has the makings of a really good fight in these early stages. Wilson bent just over six foot Farrell, five foot ten. Trying to close that gap and he is physically really strong. You can see it in the body shape. Both in great condition for this. Good exchange there at the end of round one.
a fairly close round. Um, Farrell started well behind that jab. That was good work from him. But as the round went on, and Wilson uh, Bent certainly got better. That was a lovely left up there. He got up close. He worked quite well uh, up, up close to that left up, did Wilson Bent. Like I say, a fairly even round. Probably, if I had to go either way, Dave, probably Wilson Bent just nicked it, but there's no, nothing in the, in the round at all. Corners, 10 seconds. Seconds out, round two. Well, George Farrell admits that this has come out of the blue for him. He was preparing to box on a, a small hall show. He says being on a, on a TV show in an arena of this size is a dream come true. And he's determined to make the most of the chance. And here he is again, just trying to get inside and make life awkward for River Wilson Bent. Yes, he just started this round um, poorly in that he, he just slowed his feet down and, he's, and then he's trying to box at distance and he's being picked off. He soon realised he, he's got to get up close to Wilson Bent, so that wasn't too bad from him. He's got to try and target pushing Wilson back, Bent back to the ropes. You see, that's where he's got to keep Wilson Bent. If Bent boxes from the centre of the ring, then he, you, we may see him in control. He has worked to the body well in his career so far as well, River Wilson Bent, for all of that highlight reel knockout. Stopped uh, Mike Castell and Scott Hillman with body shots. So watch out for that from him as well. Battle of the jabs there. And even though Wilson Bent is a taller man and, and uses the jab well, Farrell is also very accurate with that punch. He is, but he's got, he's got to be a little bit quick here, Farrell. His feet are a little bit too slow. The, the, the pace is suiting Wilson Bent for me. Farrell's just got to up the up the tempo a little bit, quicken his feet up. He's just he's a little bit too slow with the feet, Dave, and that's just allowing Wilson Bent just to to, to poke away with the jab and the straight right hand. He's got to move his head, foul and quicken the feet up. Left to the body. Looked on the borderline there from Wilson Bent, but he made good use of it. And Farrell is hurt there and a right hand over the top and Farrell's on the back foot great work there from Wilson Bent yeah big shots and especially with the left up when he gets up close Wilson Bent he's very dangerous throwing that shot very deceiving because he's tall and rangy you would think boxing at long range he would prefer but when he's up close he's a danger man with the left up just overbalanced there and uh, Farrell landed something in return, but great work from River Wilson Bent in this second round. Too slow again, Farrell the way he's coming forward, gets caught with the right hand, got to move the head a little bit quicker, got to move the feet, definitely quicker. You can see the confidence in Wilson Bent. Farrell with a big swing and missed by some distance if the first round was close the second has been a dominant one for the home fighter for river wilson bent big round for wilson bent here He's the left up to the body, looked slightly low but it's on the border but then he switches it to the head, lands with two good shots. Let's have a look at it from this angle, there's another left up to the body, then he switches to the head, good left up there and another one comes. So good work from the taller man on the inside, short range and the confidence with him at the end of the round, Wilson bent boxing well on the back foot, a good round. Second down, round three. So round three begins of River Wilson Bent's first defense of his Midlands area middleweight title. Is he starting to take control against George Farrell? Second round was starting to look ominous 
for the fighter from Derby. Tough man, Farrell. Took up boxing six years ago, fought on the unlicensed circuit in Derby. Once had an unlicensed fight in front of 2,000 people, so big crowds. He's no stranger to those. Just the skills and the judgment of distance of River Wilson Benny struggling with at the moment. Gets closer this time, though. Yeah, this is better from Farrell. He's um, realised that he's got to get up closer and he's quickened his feet, like we said. And, uh, so it's a little bit better at the start of this round from Farrell. He had to do something different, his feet were too slow. And he's quickened things up. He's got to slip that jab and slip to the left and whip the right hand over the top. Good work again there from Wilson Bent, just making Farrell miss. Looks the superior boxer. Has to be careful though because Farrell is throwing that right hand with some real intent. Yeah, this is a contest where Wilson Bent can't relax for one second. He's in. I think against a dangerous opponent here, who's fairly skillful, who's soon realising that he's got to get closer to him. So this this contest for me is still um, is still a close one to call. Got to be wary of being a stationary target, though. Farrell Wilson Bent trying to line him up a bit as he comes forward. Midlands area middleweight title first contested in 1939. Some uh, real good names have held it over the years. Turpin and Aldridge and Swift and Ashton. More recently the likes of Max Maxwell. River Wilson Bent looking to use it as a stepping stone. Great right hand there from Wilson Bent. That's his punch. Yeah, good boxing that was. But again, it was because Farrell just held his feet a little bit too long. Stationary target. This is a bit better from him. You can't afford to make those mistakes against the taller, rangier boxer in front of you. And the good thing about this um, this division and this title, shall I say, Dave, is that it allows boxers early on in their career to sample 10 rounds. That's the main thing, the main advantage. 10 rounds under your belt early in your career at the right time, of course. Yeah, it's very beneficial. A little grimace there from River Wilson Bent as he went back to his corner. I think he's okay. He just wondered if that attempted body shot was a bit low at the end of the round, but. Clifton Mitchell there with George Farrell. Well, a better round uh, from Farrell. Gets caught at the end there. This is when he held his feet a little bit too long. Good right hand went in from Riz uh, River Wilson Bent. There again, just because Farrell's holding his feet, stationary target, no head movements, and gets caught. four of a scheduled ten for this Midlands area middleweight title River Wilson bent in those black and silver shorts defending it against George Farrell who's giving it everything here two unbeaten fighters Wilson bent operated at the, the slightly higher level and certainly the fighter many feel will move to a higher level but he's got his hands full here Started the round fairly well behind that jab, Wilson bent. But then you see glimpses of Farrell up close. I think he's the more dangerous. And that will suit him, that type of contest, short to mid-range. But he's got to find the room on the inside. See Wilson bent, the way he's leaning over his opponent. Farrell's got to find the space to work. One thing just to keep your eye on as well, neither of these fighters has been beyond six rounds. Richie mentioned the benefit of the ten round fight. It's going to be interesting if it moves in towards that period. Who's better conditioned? Farrell has had a, a habit of just gassing a bit even at this sort of stage in a fight. Hasn't been the best at pacing himself. 
Just to make sure he's placed himself here. Yeah, mistake there from Farrell earlier on. He just, he just started the attack from too far out and tried to land the right hand, fell short, got away with it. But he's got to use that jab to measure the distance and gap before he lets that right hand go. Double jab right hand maybe is the combination you should be concentrating on. But certainly he needs head movement to avoid the shots coming forward. River Wilson then says he wants to eventually headline shows here. It's in a good action fight here. It's developing into really good scrap this. Great combination from River Wilson Bent though. His fans up out of their seats. We spoke about how R uh, Wilson Bent will, will do better from the centre of the ring, Dave. And earlier on, Farrell landed a lovely right hand when Wilson Bent was on the ropes. And that's what he's got to target. Restrict the movement of the taller boxer, push him back to the ropes, make his feet come square, and then he becomes more open. Some good quality work here from River Wilson Bent. Yeah, that was a lovely left hook, it really was. And that just made Farrell just sit back a little bit. He felt that one good punch. And a 10 seconds of round four here. Wilson Bent just keeping Farrell on the end of that jab. So when Farrell's on the attack and backs up Wilson Bent on the ropes, that's what he should be targeting and uh, that wasn't a bad shot at all. Lovely right hand over the top, Wilson Bent then, he senses the danger, he, he lands a left hook and then he gets back to the centre of the ring. And that's where he'll do his strongest work. This round will be halfway through. Midlands area middleweight title fight. River Wilson Bent. Certainly in front, not necessarily in control yet. Good right hand from George Farrell at the start of the round. That's oh, terrific work from Wilson Bent. Farrell was shaken to his boots by that combination, but he's recovered quickly. Lovely attack there from Wilson Ben. Switched the attack, didn't he? Went to the body, then switched to the head. Certainly caught Farrell. And again, both both boxers now really going for it here, Dave. Farrell with that right hand that landed again. His senses, I think, are, are still clear, Farrell. Yeah, he's a fit kid, Farrell, no question, because he's recovering from these shots. He's been dazed a couple of times, but he's got through it, he's weathered the storm, and that shows fitness in a boxer. Just sense that Wilson Bent is trying to line up the finish here. But that's when he can become vulnerable himself, Dave, when he's going for those big shots. This isn't over yet, this is a great contest. Wilson Bent again with that swarming pressure. Farrell needs to get off those ropes. Both put so much into this already as well. See, they're both feeling it. Yeah, and Wilson Bent boxing with caution again on the outside. And there is a cut, Richie, on that eye of uh, River Wilson Bent. Yeah, that will spear on Farrell, won't it? Here, Clifton Mitchell just roaring Farrell on here. Have to see where that blood's going. It looks like it 
Might be a nick almost just under the eye, Brad, but it looks to me like it's running into the eye. It's not making life easy for River Wilson, Ben. Yeah, it's a bad, bad position for the cut. Any cut's bad, but when it's above the eye and the blood running into the eye, impairs the vision of the boxer. He's just motioning there to his corner, to Brendan Norman. seen what caused it yet but we'll soon find out right hand again from Farrell just trying to take advantage of that restricted vision fights getting more and more interesting now Then we see where this cut came from. This was good work here from Wilson Ben. That's when he switched the attack from body to the head. Farrell blocked the one shot but didn't block the, the two that followed up afterwards. This is where we think the cut, yeah, it was a head clash. We think that's where the cut came from, Dave. Let's see it again here. Accidental clash of heads. But we think that's where it came from. Yeah, so just to be clear, no problem, no it was stopped because of the cut. Go to the scorecards. Ten seconds corner. Second down. Round six. But Farrell will be encouraged by it no matter how it happens. Oh absolutely. It will spur him on now. Frankie War. Cut man in that corner having to do a really good job on that River Wilson Ben. See, that's the approach he, he's got to carry on with, Dave. Farrell, the way he's walking forward there, moving his head from side to side, making the target hard to it as he's coming forward. Difficult for the taller boxer then to catch him with the jab. That's the approach from Farrell. And then from that crouch position, then he can target the hooks to the body and the head. Farrell just keeps coming forward, it's not always subtle, but it's physically powerful. Wilson Bench struggling to keep him off, but he might not be landing with everything, but he's landing with plenty. Great right hand there from Farrell. Yeah, big, big shot from Farrell. Wilson Bent has got to concentrate on mid to long range. Farrell short to mid, and he's closing that gap down. Wilson Bent looks so slick and smooth for the first four rounds, but is the tide starting to really turn? Clifton Mitchell thinks so in that Farrell corner. He's telling Wilson Bent to keep the punches up. Wilson Bent keep his cool when the world feels like it's against him at the moment. But once that jab slows down of his day, then that really brings Farrell into it. Gives him a great chance and opportunity to land that right hand over the top. Movement's crucial for Wilson Bent. This is good boxing. He's been keeping Farrell at bay, keeping him off balance with a, just a simple jab, boxing with caution and he's protecting the cut of course just enough though isn't there to keep Farrell encouraged just a reminder that neither has been past six in their career it's going to get really interesting from the end of this round onwards
Farrell getting closer to Wilson Bent. Lovely right uppercut there from him. Looking from another angle there. Yeah, super shot. Wilson Bent went to land his own punch, missed. And Farrell comes back. So he's well in the contest. Borders 10 seconds. Still working on that eye of uh, River Wilson Bent. Seconds out, round seven. Using every single second. I think we've both got it 4-2 with four rounds remaining, Richie. Yeah, I think so. A couple of the rounds uh, have been a little bit closer, but I think uh, Wilson Bent, for, for me, he's four rounds to two up. But Farrell is getting closer and closer and he's making the rounds closer and more competitive. <laughs> Wilson Bent is trying to do what you said trying to keep it at medium and long range use that reach advantage and keep moving after he's landed the jab and the straight right hand then move again that will make it more difficult for Farrell to cut the ring off and to follow him so the movement's very important for Wilson Bent after he's punched physical strength of Farrell up close the fact he's fought at the, the heavier weight really comes into play when they're up close he's dangerous Farrell is when he's up close but he's got to he's got to do better a little bit better on the inside he's been given plenty of opportunities but he's got to make the space there's a real art Dave to, to boxing at short range you've got to be able to make the space to punch at short range it's not easy he's got to do it a little bit better so right at the start their careers really it's Wilson Bent's ninth fight Farrell's sixth Wilson Bent's certainly been in with a better opposition Farrell though is turning into his stiffest test so far we always knew it was going to be the case for George Farrell that this would be the hardest it's been for him see that that's not good enough there from Farrell with, with the slow feet again he's waiting for the shot to come it's a long range jab He's not defending very well. He's just allowing Wilson Bent to pick his shots, basically. And again, good right hand. Yeah, the legs buckle there of Farrell. Wilson Bent fancies this. Tees off with the right hand. Now he's got Farrell pinned in the corner. Referee surely has to step in. Three shots for Wilson Bent. And it's over. It's over. River Wilson Bent wins a thriller in front of his adoring fans well what a finish that was from Wilson Bent he hit him with a couple of straight right hands Farrell just made the mistake of just slowing his feet down a little bit he was waiting for the attacks Wilson Bent threw good jabs good straight right hands he connected and he felt his knuckles right through the glove and then he knew he had his opponent on the ropes and just kept it going didn't he tremendous follow-up from Wilson Bent that was a terrific finish yeah, Wilson Bent just sensed that he'd hurt him and he jumped on him. Yeah, good shot to the body there. Misses with that shot, but that's the right hand that probably really started to do the damage. Farrell goes back into the corner, onto the ropes. Wilson Bent knew then he had Farrell and just kept the, the punches going. So he's literally waiting for the ref to jump in here. I actually thought that the ref could have gone in there, to be quite honest. I don't think there would have been many complaints if that was the case, but nevertheless, Wilson Bent kept the attack going, sustained pressure, and the referee jumps in. A good finish. Yeah, you took the words out of the mouth. I was about to ask you that he could have just gone in earlier. Didn't like the last punch that he had to take there. I'm not sure he had to, Richie. I don't think there'd have been any complaints would there if the referee would have jumped in. But the referee has given Farrell every opportunity to respond and to get through it, but he didn't. And Wilson Bent just kept the attack going, sustained the pressure, and a terrific finish. It was a great contest. It really was. Yeah, Farrell loses nothing in defeat, really. Brave performance, and he'll learn from it as well. He'll maybe find out his limit he's taking on oxygen at the moment in that corner excellent medical team straight away
there to uh, help Farrell. Yeah, and he'll come again. You know, he's only had the five contest. He's certainly got a bit of quality there as as the lad. And yeah, he, he will he will come again. Well, he, it was, was a contest, Dave, that he was always in. Always in this contest. Absolutely. River Wilson bent though is becoming a fighter to watch. She's got this great following here in Coventry as well. And uh, we've said this a few times, but he's not going to be in too many dull fights, I don't think. Anyway, let's make it official with our MC Paul Booth. Firstly, boxing fans, a show of respect for the efforts of both those professional boxers. The official length of the contest falls at 2 minutes 21 seconds of round at number 7. Referee Sean Messer stops the bout. In his opinion, George Farrell is in no position to defend himself. The winner, and still Midlands area middleweight champion, Coventry's River Wilson Bay!